Hi everyone, let's go over my bullish and bearish Elliott Wave scenarios on Bitcoin, starting with the regular flat where we're looking for a 3 wave A, 3 wave B and a 5 wave C to the downside where preferably price is moving into the common target area of this wave C which is between the 1 and the 1.236 trend based wave extension taken from the high to the low of A to the high of wave B, giving you a target area between 59.7k and 56.6k with the extension target for this wave wave C being the 1.618 at 51.6k. We do have some support to the downside. We have the weekly gap on the weekly time frames. On the weekly time frame, we have the order block over here, that is candle number one. Then we had the push to the upside, and then over here you have the wick low of the next candle, creating this gap over here. Commonly, price will find support when it tests a gap for the first time. But if you start to close daily candles inside this gap, the probabilities would increase for price to move to the downside to 53k. And you can see that the gap has nice confluence with the target area for your wave C as well. If I don't open my additional support areas, then you can also see that just below the gap, right on top of the 1.618, we have some additional support between 51.6k and 51.9k. In this scenario, we are then looking for an impulsive structure to the downside. And that one is this one over here. So we have a five wave impulsive structure and we are looking for a wave of five. In this scenario, we have a finished wave one, two, three, potentially still working on wave four or a finished wave four, and we look for a wave of five to the downside. The invalidation for a wave four is the 0 0.618 at 67.3k, taken from the high to the low of my wave three here on the chart. Now for this wave 5, there's a few options. Preferably, a wave 5 is quite similar in length compared to a wave 1 in time and price if wave 3 is extended. However, if wave 4 is finished over here after this structure to the upside, and this is the beginning of your wave 5, then your wave 5 is going to extend as well. And it is actually very rare in a single impulsive structure to have an impulsive wave 3 that is extended and a wave 5 that is extended. So therefore, preferably, the price section that we have at the moment still consists of wave 4. The vertical lines that you see on the chart is a FIP time, and this FIP time is taken from the low of 1 to the high of 2 to the low of 3, comparing 2 with wave 4. And as you can see, we still have enough space for wave 4 to move sideways if it wants to. Of course, it can at any moment just move down for a wave 5 in this particular scenario. But a wave 4 ranging all the way to the 4 FIP time is not a problem. Saturday 20th of April starts to become very very long once we get to the 5 or the 6 FIP time with the 5 sitting on Sunday the 21st of April 8 p.m. Central European time. More locally we are then looking for corrective structures and here you can see a wave A, B, C, 535 zigzag structure where wave B retraced to the 886 Fibonacci taken from the low to the high of this wave A. The 886 is a rare target for a wave 2, common target for a wave B or a wave X, which does increase the probabilities that any move towards the upside is corrective in a wave C or a wave Y. Therefore, probabilities then increase for price to eventually move to the downside to take the double bottom. If we zoom out and look at the bigger WXY scenario on the 4 hour chart, which is the bullish scenario, we look at a finished W, finished X and then a 3 wave structure to the downside in a wave Y being a regular flat. Regular flat target wave B is the 1 to the 105, pretty much respected and then you want a 5 wave move to the downside in a wave C that is finished with this wick here. Common target area for your wave Y is the blue box on the chart. Trend based of extension from the high to the low of W to the high of wave X, 0 0.618 to the 1.236, 63.7K, 55.6K. And the extension target for a wave C in a regular flat is the 1.618. And as you can see, nicely respected. But that does mean that from this low, we want to see impulsive structures to the upside as we are looking for continuation. Therefore, on the lower time frame, 
we then want to see this we have our wave one over here followed by a wave two and then continuation to the upside now it has to be said that this wave two is not easy to count as a finished structure because this move to the downside looks impulsive it's not that easy to count a double zigzag type of move in here finishing at the low but it is a very low wave two as it hit the 0 0.786 it is still a common target for a wave two the 886 is not touched but it is not that easy to at least finish a wave two at the low over here now in this scenario what we are looking for anyway is from this low bullish impulsive structures towards the upside as we are looking for a wave three the wave three usually minimum target is the 1.618 taken from the low to the high to the low sitting at 71.5k and then i have to open this folder here where now from this low we're going to count impulsive structures towards the upside and see if it works yes or no now you might already see that the invalidation line is hit as price decided to move to the downside when i'm recording this video but we have our wave two here right and we look for an impulse towards the upside here we then have our wave one wave two reaching the 886 it is rare but it is a target nonetheless then we look for a one two three four and eventually a wave five to the upside but what we actually don't want to see is overlap between wave one and wave four even if the white wave four is already finished and the white wave five as well and therefore yellow three and then we're looking for yellow four then now we have overlap between the yellow one and the yellow four and overlap does not mean a bullish scenario is completely invalidated but it does increase the probabilities of an abc structure with the 886 probabilities attached to that as well because in a regular impulse where we are looking for a one two one two three four five four five we don't want overlap between a wave one or a wave four and price now move to the downside hit the overlap with this white wave one and therefore also with the yellow wave one which invalidates this impulsive structure towards the upside that i have on my chart doesn't mean that even as a corrective structure in an ABC we can have a potential double zigzag WX and eventually wave Y towards the upside still see a bit more upside as well. We have some resistance to the upside which is quite attractive first we have 64.765.1k the value area high as well as the golden pocket from the high to the low and then we have this blue box here 65.7k 66.3k but the overlap that we have over here is at least not ideal for a bullish scenario and the only alternative that you now have is either a 1212 and then you expect a very big wave 3 to the upside or we're going to think about about diagonals where we then have a one two three four five but that is still a little bit early so we have to remain very very patient so the scenario the bullish scenario as this one just now got invalidated would then be a wave one two a one two and then you want to see continuation to the upside or the diagonal but we need a little bit more information with regards to the cvd divergences however if we look at the chart here you can see we actually had a little bit of bullish cvd divergences here with this small little red candle higher low in price but here on yellow we had a lower low on the cvd and at the moment with this move to the downside you can also see cvd move to the downside especially on yellow as well creating a bit of a bullish cvd divergences here the target would be the high so let's see how this is gonna develop so if we then look at the probabilities of the different scenarios then on the weekly time frame i know i haven't covered it but it is still important the probabilities are higher for the bullish scenarios where we expect a continuation of the trend after this range is finished and on the number two spot we then have a potential bear market to the downside on the four hour chart which is this range over here probabilities remain higher higher for the lows to be taken unless locally we're going to see some good proof of support which starts also for me with a good local bullish account here and on the number two we have a bullish wxy where the low is in and we look for price to move to the upside so either we look for this arrow or we're going to look for a move down and then a move to the upside at a later stage and on the 15 minute time frame corrective at the moment has a higher probability just because we move down into wave one territory but I will continue to observe for the potential of a double one two here one two one two an impulsive continuation or a diagonal locally 
That being said, I hope that this video was helpful or valuable to you. Please check out the most recent educational video I've made about the best trading indicator you can use in my opinion, which is the CVD. And for now, thanks for watching and subscribing and I'd like to see you at the next one. Bye bye.